joined by Mark, Mark Moyer and Laura Turner, and we're talking about another show. In fact, we were just talking about a show you guys did earlier this year. So much theater going on for you guys. Yeah, well, it's been fantastic. Now, we've got uh, something special. Now, a lot of the shows that you guys have done together recently have been with Providence University mm -hmm. College. This is something completely new. Tell us a little bit about uh, See No Evil and kind of the whole plan for this show in particular. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, so what we've done is we have started a professional theater company based right here in Steinbeck. And See No Evil is our debut show. It is us getting out into the community saying, here we are. This is the type of show that, um, well, the type of caliber of show that we are putting into the community. And we hope you guys will enjoy it and love it. Uh, Have a special sneak you. preview for audiences. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a professional company, so audiences can expect to be thoroughly entertained. And uh, we're really excited to be doing this. Yeah. It all came up quite, quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, tell me a little bit about this script. This is an original, and it's not the first time it's being put on. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I wrote the first draft of this script uh, back in 2012, and it was a shorter version of it, and it was for a, for a fundraiser for, for an organization I'd been contracted to write a, a sort of mystery dessert theater for. And uh, so we did it uh, back then, and uh, it was, was a solid script. And uh, we did a radio version of it at the Fringe Festival, I want to say in 20, oh boy, 2018, um, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere about five there. years ago. And, uh, uh, and then we, we were sort of going back and forth saying, okay, you know, we want to, we want to put something out there uh, sort of as a, as a preview of, of what we plan to be doing uh, before we start to run full seasons. And this play was a natural fit. You know, we were really, we knew it really well. We were comfortable with it. And uh, we knew we could get on its feet quickly. And that's exactly what we've done. And so it's a really fun show. It's sort of a Hitchcock style suspense mystery thriller. Uh, it's got charms and chills in equal measure. It's got laughs. It's got some good scares. It's, uh, it's just a fantastic script. And uh, it's going to keep the audience guessing quite literally from the moment the curtain goes up to the moment the curtain falls. That the audience won't know exactly what's happening or what to believe or who to believe. And uh, it's, it's going to be a really fun night. We're serious so, about as you said, kind of a kind of a Hitchcock thriller type thing. So more geared towards an older audience. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd say probably you wouldn't want to bring. I mean, probably junior high up. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we're basing this on what what kids are probably watching on TV, but it's always different lines. Like that's one of the things. You know, people can watch something on TV, and and it's it's less affecting than when you see it happening live in front of you. So yeah, so the show. I mean, there there's some scenes of of violence. There's some mature subject matter. So I'd say junior high up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a really fun show, a great, um, you know, great opportunity for people to go on a date, go on a classy date here, right here at Steinbeck and, uh, yeah, have a really good time. Now you were talking about this, uh, professional theater and talking about the cast. Uh, what can we expect from that? Well, our cast is full of professionals, um, yeah, professional actors in the industry or those who are, um, wanting to break into, uh, professional acting as well. And so... We've had um, a few people ask if we're, because we're doing it at the SR, um, if we're using, if it's high school students. Um, and so just to clear that up, no, we are using professional actors um, and they are, you can tell, they are wonderful. Yeah, we've got a, a variety of people who've done a wide variety of theater and film. We have people who've been involved with Manitoba Theater for Young People, Royal Manitoba Theater Center, people who've been coast to coast, people who've done television and film. Uh, people who you know are coming out of the U of W Honors program, like we've we've got a really stellar uh, cast, and then we've got some, uh, like Laura said, some sort of up and comers who are. Uh, it, this is one of those with a lot of these people. It's going to be see them now, see them now while it's still affordable to do so, because yeah. there's a lot of people in this cast who are going places. Well, and I have to say, I'm 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 in the cast as well. I was really just hoping for you know uh, pumping of my tires here, so that's exactly why I brought this up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can say lots about your performance and how fantastic it is. Yeah. But I can confirm some really awesome people and some great people to work with. Tell us a little bit about your goal for Looking Glass 
and uh, and this idea of creating professional works in Steinbeck. Sure. Um, uh, we we started uh, talking about this and planning this about three years ago, and uh, and so this uh, this show is sort of our first uh, experiment, our first sort of dipping our toes in the water. What we want to do eventually, our goal is to like like a regular professional theater to run full seasons of a place. And um, again, based right here in, in the Southeast, there's a, there's a great market for theater. We have some wonderful community groups who do some great theater here already, but we think the market can handle uh, a professional company. Uh, we think we have that caliber of people here in the Southeast to sustain a professional company. And um, yeah, running full seasons, the, the long-term goal is to have a, our, our own um, theater right here in Steinbach. That's what we're working towards is having our own theater space. Which, which will be for obviously for us to run our seasons of plays, probably you know five or six plays a year, but at the same time, uh, eventually will also become a, a rental opportunity for, for the various you know choirs and dance groups and other theater companies. I mean, there's, there's so many, uh, South is such a great place for arts in general. And, uh, and uh, we wanna provide an opportunity for, for more people to have a, a functional venue to do that. Now, these are pretty big plans. Tell us uh, what your thoughts are as far as the theater goes, because obviously, you know, we've seen projects come and go and, and maybe not take root. What, what do you envision seeing as far as a facility goes? Well, what we'd like to see, I mean, I think what we've talked about mainly is doing sort of a warehouse style space. I mean, for anybody who's been to um, uh, Prairie Theater Exchange and has seen the Colin Jackson Theater, who's seen sort of a black box mm -hmm. style theater, that's kind of what we'd be looking at. Uh, you know, it, you're always basing what your dreams are versus both what is uh, affordable, what's what's realistic and doable, uh, but also what the market can financially sustain based on the population. And so those are the conversations we have going on. So we're looking right now, probably, uh, I think the goal is between a 200, 200 and 300 seat venue, uh, sort of a warehouse style, uh, but ultimately something where, where we'd be able to really control the atmosphere and, uh, uh, one of the things we've talked about that's really fun is is having seating that can be reconfigured for any different show. So, for example, you never know what perspective you're going to be seeing a play from. So, you, you know, let's say we put on a play like, you know, A Few Good Men or To Kill a Mockingbird. Well, you know, all of a sudden, 12 of those tickets you've sold, people are sitting in the jury box and they're live and they're part of the action. Or or if you're doing Shakespeare or something Greek, you could do theater in the round or, or you know, you can you can do screens as part of your like there's so much you can do with with a warehouse style space. And uh, I think that's what we're leaning towards, yeah. uh, at least initially. Mm -hmm. One more question on that front. Is the dream of this being something that's private, public, something in between? What are the thoughts there? We've, we've looked at it as a private enterprise, but certainly something that'll be widely available to the community for use. Mm -hmm. uh, we want, you know, theater should be for everybody. The arts are supposed to be for everybody. And I think there's a misconception out there that, that fine arts can, can tend to be for, you know, for those who can afford it. And, and one of the things we want to do, theater has always been for common people, for ordinary people. And, uh, and we want to make sure that it, it remains affordable. Obviously, it costs a lot of money to do live theater. This is not a cheap endeavor. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, we, we think we can do it here in the Southeast for, for a reasonable price. And I think, I think people are going to be really blown away by the bang for buck with the quality of performances and shows they're going to see. Yeah, well, that. with that in mind, let's go back to uh, See No Evil and the quality of the show here. Laura, tell us a little bit about the, the show times, dates, where can people buy tickets, anything else about the show you really want to get out there? Yeah, absolutely. So tickets are on sale now um, at the Arts Council. Uh, they can be purchased there in advance or they can be purchased at the door. Um, it's all just cash only at this point. Uh, tickets are $30 uh, and the dates and times are, uh, well, it'll be this weekend. So Friday, May 19th at 7.30. Um, and it's uh, all of the, our Steinbeck dates are happening at the SRSS Theater. Uh, and then we'll do two shows uh, this Saturday as well, one at 2 p.m. and one at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and then we're going to be coming back again the following weekend, so May 26th, that's a Friday, at 7.30 p.m. And then May 27th, that's a Saturday, we have a 2 p.m. matinee and a 7.30 p.m. show as well. And we are also doing shows in Morden um, in uh, early June. So there will be shows at the Kenmore Theatre on June 9th at uh, 7 p.m. And then June 10th at 2 p.m. 
and 7 p.m. And tickets, advanced, advanced tickets, I do believe. Will be through the Kenmore Theater as well. Will be through well, the Kenmore yeah. Theater. Um, and you can also purchase tickets at the door at the yeah. Kenmore Theater as well. Again, cash only at the door. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, Morton, we were the fun. We, we keep joking that we open in Morton on Laura's birthday and we close yeah. on my birthday. So it's going to be a fun weekend for us. And what, what better way to do it than to put in a great show for show, people? Yeah. Yeah, well, and you put all the work into one, you might as well you might as well do it in a few different places, right? That's yeah, exactly right. absolutely. And we we're introducing ourselves to the whole community too. And so by doing um, you know a run in Steinbeck and then also a run over in Morden, I really feel like we have the opportunity for more people to see us, for more of the southeast to just easily come and and see the show because it'll be close. Um, and that's really what we want to do is just make a statement of saying like, we are here, we're here to stay. We're really excited about this community and we hope this community is uh, going to be just as excited about us. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for chatting. Anything else you'd wanted to mention? Um, I, I think that's about all for us right now. I will say, I will say to mix 96 fans, if you like Kenton on the radio, you're going to love him on stage Yeah. Uh, because for anyone who hasn't had a chance to see Kenton perform on stage, he's a fantastic actor. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, but come come see come see your favorite host, and uh, come see the rest of this great young cast while you have the chance. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, Kenton.